Welcome back. All the smoke. New York edition. What's up, bro? You got the cocaine nah, on today, nah, huh? Oh, oh, yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your yeah. palms sweaty? I don't know. You don't know? We ain't gonna you find out. Sure? No, nah, we're not gonna find out. Man, though. day two in New York. Had a great day yesterday. We got two good ones today, man. Introduce your folks. My brothers from another mother. You dig what I'm saying? Uh, I've been knowing the Vamp King for a minute. You know what I mean? But these brothers coming out with a new, came out with a new project, the Lobby Boys. But we've been wanting to have Jim on the show. And he just blessed us with bringing Maino too, so we're getting the two for one today. Jim Jones and Maino in the building. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate y'all yeah. being fellas. here, man. Big lobby. Lobby boys. Let's lobby get boys. to it. I mean, your interaction is like family, so how'd y'all meet? Uh, we met y'all a long time ago. <laughs> we didn't like each other. Look. I, it, 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 let's just, just get it right out the way. We did not like each other. Yeah, I didn't like how he ordered I, like his he drinks. I saw with 300 niggas every time I seen him. <laughs> <laughs> No, we, 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 had, we had mutual friends. We ain't really, we ain't really, I can't say we ain't get along because we ain't know each other. You know, sometimes, you know, you, you, you can judge things from the, from, from the outside, right? right? So it's like, you can, you can look at somebody like, I don't like this nigga, right? Until you get to meet him. Right. 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 And right. you say to yourself, damn, this nigga, man, this nigga like. We like some of the same shit. We yeah. do some of the same things. And that's how it was. We, ain't, we, we, ain't, we knew each other from the outside and th that representation of, of, of our images. And, you know, plus I was saying slick shit. So it was like, you know. <laughs> plus. A lot, yeah. of, a lot of slick yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. But Why don't you tell him what you said. I got you like Jimmy, You said Jimmy getting bigger yeah, now, Yeah, something right? about Jimmy getting, getting, getting bigger now. Your rap stuff? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, was th that, I had that type of energy. I see. Right? And, and, and what happened was when we clicked, we clicked. Yeah, it we wasn't, clicked. It wasn't no second and it, guessing. It was, it, was it, was, just, it was just like love from the door. I thought you were about to say love at first sight. I was about to say, it's, whoa, it's wait, you bugging, what are you whoa, talking whoa, about, bro? Yeah, you're bugging. Maniac, you're bugging. You're bugging. It's way too early to talk like this. You're bugging, bro. We up here. This, you can't be this high yet. <laughs> he said you can't be this high yet. You can't yet. be this high yet. We've been debating, though, uh, enjoying. I think we live in a hamster wheel so much that we don't get to enjoy our successes or what we accomplish. We always on to the next thing. We've been talking about that the last couple of days of kind of appreciating what the fuck you've been through, you overcame, right. what you've accomplished. That's right. Well, but also, this is important. Yo, retired. Yo, got millions, and y'all right. get to live the rest of your life however you want to. You heard? You already did the hard part. Now it's about balling and living. Yeah. Mm. Whatever it is you had on your bucket list, you got the money to. Mm. Make the bucket list go on, nigga. If that's the South of friend, whatever it is you niggas feel like you need to do, y'all could do now. Basketball was the hard part. Mm. That's you know what I mean? As much enjoyment as you got from right. it. Right, right. That was the that hard was the part. Y'all had to go through injuries. You had to go through days and days of You don't miss the game. No, nah, I, I love what I'm doing now. I love now. the game, but I don't miss I don't miss what well, I'm well, There it is. I love Action. what I'm doing now. You'll need something else to fulfill yeah. that, that yeah. void that you're missing in. I, yeah, I, I, I coach my kids, so that's kind of my game right, now. Right, right. That's, that's, yeah, that's yeah. how I get my shit in box. So I they, couldn't pay, you, they couldn't pay you to get back on the court right now? Nah. No amount you of just money. Don't want to do nah, it. I can't. I'm not gonna go out there just, and embarrass myself. I've been five years removed. It's like you know what I mean. It's, yeah, my it, body ain't gonna do it. I can always it. play, but it's just like getting off that bike is. Why are you serious. starting so much trouble? It wasn't. A, what is your so, problem? So yeah. we was talking to other. Grant yeah, he Hill he was saying about that. We get to you and y'all. We gonna get to like you next, buddy. What is your problem? Why did you smoke? Why did you try to flinch at Kobe? He didn't move. Did you feel bad after that? Nah. Kobe was cold with that one. You try to do it. Kobe was like, bro, dog. He Not loved me all. for it. He, he loved, loved me for it. it. But no, Grant Hill was sitting right here yesterday, and he said, whenever, throughout my career, whenever I had some shit, it was never with me one-on-one. -on -one. It was me defending my teammates. Always. Kobe shit was different. Me and Kobe was about that. That's my... We always had a mutual respect, just a back-and-forth respect, because, we, you know, I saw him at UCLA when he was young, and I was in college, and so there was a mutual respect. But Kobe was a obviously a physical physical killer, but a, like a mental giant, too. He tried to physically fuck you or mentally fuck you over, too, so that the grabbing, the elbowing, the, just the shit that the rest wouldn't call. And I was just tired. He hit me in my sternum and knocked all the wind out of me. And the rest, fuck this, man. The rest no, just looked no. at me, so I was trying to fight him. I told him, bro, I was trying to fight you, bro. So I, I, the ball fake shit just happened. It wasn't you did bad. a lot of punching, though. You swinging. And you're... I, you, you, like, you was dude, with it. I need, I wish you lucky this ain't not sure. I'd have every clip. Right now, You did a bro. lot of punches. You got a yeah. highlight viral reel. That's how me and Jack just really? got along. We was very similar from that standpoint. Then when he came to uh, our team in, in 07, they 06. They like the basketball lobby boys. You noticed that? Could be. Could they be like the basketball, basketball lobby, boys. lobby boys. I like that That's name. Fat. We gotta get the shirts made. Basketball lobby boys. Woo! Definitely. Definitely. Could Those be. are the guys. We, hey, we don't, hey, we don't have lobbies in, in, in Texas, Port Arthur, Texas. Shout out Pimp C and Bun B. But 
But I you know got the wards. We got our own lobby. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fourth ward, yeah. that's the lobby. Yeah. Yeah. Fourth ward, yeah. that's the lobby. Yeah. 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 All we got our own birds. Yeah. It's the lobby. Yeah. Any yeah. corner Same that you thing. congregated on, that's a fact. trying that's to hustle, trying to that's get a dollar with that's your guys, that's the lobby. Any place in the street you face adversity and trying to get out of that, that's the lobby. I figured that. The lobby is just our fifth ward. That's our version of all the inner cities that's throughout right. the country. But we got lobbies, you word, did? Y'all got corners. Some mm -hmm. niggas got the wards, some niggas got the projects. It's all a representation of the same thing. Same and thing. what we try to show people is the unity and the things that we came up against and how we came over it. Um, and we still a work in progress and trying to show people an example of what you can be coming from nothing. Coming from that's different fact. lobbies too. Right, coming, right. From, coming from that pain. So it didn't matter if it was the courtyard, the behind the building, on the project benches, in front of your building, you know, because it, just because it, certain places is built geographically different, it's still the same thing. When we congregated as as as, as young kids with dreams, you know, yeah. some of us had NBA dreams, yeah. some of us had dreams to be the biggest drug dealer, whatever it was, you know, we lost friends, we lost family members. Those that 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 era at those times is what made us who we are today, right? Mm -hmm. Y'all y'all live in testament of of, of hard work of progress, and y'all made it out. We, we did the same thing on our side, mm -hmm. you understand? So on a whole different did. level, because I, I know what you done been through, so on a yeah, whole different indeed. level. Yeah. That's right, indeed. A lot. Different roads lead to the same place if you, mm -hmm. if you focus. You know, yeah. Like, y'all mm -hmm. chose early to use basketball as the, the main to the get vehicle. out of your situation. The vehicle you to get out, yeah. The same thing for us. We figured out our vehicle. Our vehicle ended up being the music and the entertainment and shit like that. Even for Maino, he's even more illa because he had a way iller start, a way harder start mm -hmm. than anybody coming coming back from damn near where Bane and them was at. And Bane. My man, my man Bane. shining right now, you heard? Bane. He was with Bane and them. I was with Bane. Yeah, was definitely Bane. was with Bane. <laughs> with fucking big Bane. I like that. <laughs> Batman. Batman. Yeah. But hey, what? What? Suit. No, no, I got the fucking new suit. Got, I got the I new got suit. The new don't suit. do this. You start this way. You embarrass me. I got bro. the new suit. So, see, see I, I'm listen, cool with the Batman on Batman, listen, but listen, he don't want to come yeah. to grips that he you got the old suit that go pow, <laughs> boom. Oh, and yeah, I got the Dark Knight shit. This shit that come with all the all amenities. My suit come with all amenities. It's, that shit is like a seven-star hotel, you, my Batman suit. All the amenities, you That they had in the cartoon. Oh, this is crazy. Comic books, bro. You, not, bro, you don't have a TV you, you, you got another question? Because we going to go For through real, this, this all day, bro. bro. I don't want to argue with you today, bro. Give, both of y'all give me two artists y'all idolized growing up. Oh, Tupac? Man. Mm. Tupac definitely one of my top. My that's top, like bro. one. That's like, I'm that's not. That's nothing we got yeah. in common. We love Tupac. Yeah. Tupac. But then after that, it's like, I can't really put a finger on it. Maybe like, but then it was like Rock Cam, then it was like Big Daddy Kane, then it was like Slick Rick, then it was like, yo, I was telling somebody yesterday, like, I learned how to drink liquor through hip hop music. Mm. All the real ones, all the real ones from the E&J was sitting back up in the staircase. Tupac put you on a thug passion. Niggas wasn't drinking Hennessy till Tupac started saying Hennessy because we was drinking E&J because that's what Nas told us to do. And then we had the St. Nas, them niggas were doing all the St. Nas, we started drinking the St. Nas, like, Think yeah. about that. Yeah. You start drinking yeah, off of hip-hop. Yeah. Yeah. You heard? Yeah. Yeah. You don't you know about that? Niggas really start drinking off of hip-hop. Niggas did a lot off of hip-hop. Hip 100%. That was like, that's like, it's definitely a, a blueprint to, to, mm, to, to life. life. See, the music was a soundtrack to, to lifestyle that was already happening. It just broadened it. You know what I mean? Like, the things that rappers was talking about were already things that was going on. Like, Dr. Drake. You know? Uh, what was that? Uh, what? Uh, uh, the... the, the Nigga, Tangeray, nigga. Oh, yeah. Seagram's Gin, nigga. Yeah. Niggas wasn't on that to yeah. Snoop and them start right. talking about that Tangeray and that Seagram Yeah, Gen nigga, that was an L.A. That was a it's West LA, Coast right. drink. We wasn't right. on that. Right. Soon as he said that, niggas was on that Tangeray. Let's right. see what this Tangeray is about. My lion? But that, that, nah, that's the facts. culture for you. Y'all was there. Facts. It's inf influential. Very. Right? It's very inf influential. And here we are today, many years later, and, and we, the, we the biggest influence in the world. Facts. Been that. Right, been we've, we've been that. It took a while to admit it. Yeah, yeah. We we've been start, that. Yeah. Been that. But we right? finally, we finally starting to monetize off it. That's yes, why they're starting to indeed. recognize it now. Because we never been. They've always indeed. been telling our stories. Indeed. That's why That's shit right. like this is important. What y'all do is important. important to show motherfuckers like, damn. Those two did this, or y'all two, they did like that's this right. show. Anybody it's, can do right, it. That's right, because at the end of the day, it's about inspiration, bro. Like we, we, we here for a certain amount of time, right? right. Then we going, right? And and it's about. Not how long you live, but how well you live and what you did, the, what impact that you made. I want to do something that, that, is, that is very impactful. I want to do something that, 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 that I want to die a legend, my nigga. Because either, mm -hmm. either you die a legend or they just won't remember. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So it's important on what you do with the time that you got right now. Great. Thanks. Sports fans, both of y'all Knicks fans? 
I'm a Knicks fan. I'm a Knicks fan. I'm a Knicks fan. And Nets fans, I'm from Brooklyn. I'm a Knicks fan because I'm always a Knicks fan. That's just in my heart. But That's they've disappointed me so many times. Press life to I was, live, ain't it? I was done when John Starks went <laughs> three for 21 after he dunked on Michael Jordan in the game before. I just ruined it. <laughs> but I'm going with Golden State for the, like the last oh. 10 years. Oh, yeah. yeah. So oh, yeah. Yeah. When did music come in the mix for y'all? Music always, all, for me, music always been in the mix since I'm a hip hop baby, since my mom was teaching me how to break dance in, in, in the living room in the Bronx. But when it turned into business for me, is um, the year, uh, well, a few years before my grandma passed, Cam and Bloodshed, Derek, uh, God bless, they always was rapping and things like that. They always was into it heavy. Then they started doing freestyles and they started becoming very, no, very dope in Harlem and things like that. Um, my grandma passed, Cam and Mace went to school. Um, they both ended up getting kicked out and had to come back and live with me because they didn't want to tell their parents they got kicked out of school. Um, those few months of them living with me, they got into heavy into music. Uh, Mace ended up being the breakout artist, ended up getting to deal with, with Diddy, coming back and snatched Cam, got Cam to deal through Biggie. And once Cam came back home, it was lit since then. And we had ups and downs through the music, but overall, here we when are right that? now. So when, when, you, when, when they hit, what year was that? That was like 90, we graduated in 94. They went to school, came back at the end of 95. Started going crazy in 96. I think May signed in 96 and Cam signed in 97. That's crazy. You don't really have three childhood friends like right. that that all blow up That's like that. That's, That's crazy. crazy. That's a crazy bro. story. Same, same That's spot. crazy. Mm -hmm. I've been, I've been, I've been a, a diehard hip hop fan since since whatever, but I never, ever had an aspiration to be a rapper. Never. Never thought about, never had a dream, never had any inkling, never nothing. I never wrote raps, never nothing. I was, uh, I was in the street very early in my life, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, I wound up uh, doing a long time. And during that time I was in prison, you know, I was a young kid, so. What age you go in at? At 17. You got out at what age? 27. So I was, I was, I was, getting into a lot of trouble in prison though, right? So I was always in a box. I was like a, you know, pro problematic. And you know, you know, them people that put you in a box for years, right? So it's the SHU, the special housing unit, they put you in there, they shit you down for, for a year, two years. So I was in those, I, I spent almost four years you know, all together like that. And most, and most people lose their mind. Right, right, right. But those see, see, that's the thing about, about, about having will, strong will, because mm -hmm. under, the, under those conditions is when I became a stronger person. Under those conditions is when I even started rapping. So I started rapping because it was like, just past the time. Like, man, then, you know, it's fun to do. So I get up, I'll be in my cell, right? I, 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 would, I would write a, I'd write a rhyme. It'd take me down there the whole day. Before I know it, the whole day is gone. Mm -hmm. And it started to feel good to do it. And then I would play with the idea, like going home to do it. Like, man, maybe I'll go out and do this. And I'm like, nah, I ain't no fucking rapper. So it's, it's just as much as I was a fan, I, I had never thought about music in a business aspect until I started to say, uh, maybe I should try it when I got home because one of the one of the scariest thoughts while, while being in prison is not knowing what you're gonna do when you mm -hmm. get out. So I never, I never, I was, a, I'm from the street, that's it. I was nothing else. I, everything I've ever done was in the street. I've never been productive in nowhere else. I've been two places in my whole life, prison in the street, that's it. And when I got out of prison, I went back to the street. So music was a way out for me. Mm -hmm. So when I caught the bug, it was it was everything for me. This is why I'm smiling like now today. Yeah, right. Yeah. Life is music. good. Save saved me, baby. Saved a lot of us. Saved me. It saved us in the fact that the direction we was headed in was not a good direction from a young age. Mm. And the fact that we got a chance to do that deal so young, like we were all 18, 19, something right, like that. It saved us from a lot of things that we were heading into. Even though we still w went in the wrong direction, we had some balance because we knew we were in a different position. But for the the music in the start for me and so later on in the 2000s after Cam and them figured it out. But Cam and Mace always told, Mace told me how to rap and Cam always made sure I was on every single album he had. He was like, boy, once you figure out how to rap the same way you act in these streets, it's gonna work for you, mm -hmm. just keep going. Mm -hmm. And that's all I, so I always gotta give credit to where credit is due and shit like that. It would be no Jim Jones if it I wasn't can. for them guys and shit like that. And I ended up catching on because they started making, I was doing everything, directing, security, engineering, but they was coming in every night, 30, 40,000 off that 
show money. I was like, no, I got to figure this out. This is I got to really get into this rap mode, and that's what really propelled is just seeing all the success. The first, that they was the having. first joint y'all did, when you like, it was it was on uh, Cam first tape, right? First album, me, and my mom's and Jamie. Exactly, I remember that. Remember that. Remember that like yesterday. Freshers of Fire was yeah. his, his first his first album. Yeah. One of my favorite shits was Certified Gangster. You did with uh, Game. That was dope. That shit was hard. That was a great experience. That was a good time in my life. I was I was the first person to bring Game to actually New York. This is when me and Game really, 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 really tight were. Like, that was my guy. And she's still my guy to this day. But at that time, we were moving in one accord, bring him to New York. Shouts to uh, Fort Bet RP, was his best friend at the time. I would go to I would go to LA and then ride through all bumped in. <laughs> you heard shouts to. Shots the term, y'all know term. term. Of course, of course. Hey, term, the term, most term, name. Term, yeah, term had his own segment. He came on the show with BD because that nigga been shouted out probably fifty times on yeah, the show. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you probably term texting is a, me is now. A great, is a, is a, he has a great bridge from yep. you dig, Street especially on the, the West Coast mm -hmm. and yeah. things like that. And yeah. he, he's he got a real Good heart. Dude. You know what I mean? That's Good family dude. and things like that. But <laughs> yeah, shouts the game, shouts to certified yeah. gangsters. That was that's what really started it all for me and shit like that. Just being a. A fan. I was really a fan of West Coast music and West Coast movies. You know, at that time, Menace to Society, Boys mm -hmm. and Hood, gave us a whole different look on what life right. was from a whole nother. And yeah. it really turned in Snoop and Pac and all on that West. It just started. So I always was a fan and ended up getting that beat from Bang. Shout out to Bang from Chicago. I was like, wow, this is my speed. I got to do this Easy e joint over and shit mm -hmm. like that. Hard. I went to the night, that studio that night. What Cam was there, Cam was in there and he ended up doing the last verse that night. That's how mm. I got Cam that on the record. That shit was tough. Well, we ask all NBA people, like, what was your welcome to the NBA moment? When do you feel like you're welcome to the music moment? Like, damn, motherfuckers really know my name now. Not through the streets, because of this music, though. For me, it was a song called Rumors. So I come, so when I get out, I, I was uh, was in a mixtape mix tape game, the, the DVD game. Right, so you know, back this is back when the Smack DVDs mm -hmm. was, was everything. That, that was my introduction into the game, and then I did a song what called you Rumors. Talk, you talking about me in the song? No, not that one, nigga. Not that one. <laughs> not that one. You, talking you about came me after in that, that one. You came after that. Yeah, yeah. You, you came after that. I was trying to make get get, get the record straight. Yeah, yeah. You, no, 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 you, you came after. You definitely came after that. All right. You got. Yeah, you, you came after that. Um, <laughs> so so uh, that was my 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 initial. Like, damn, niggas know my name. Outside of the street, like, right. niggas, this is the music business is mm -hmm. talking about mm -hmm. me. And actually, I got my first record deal off that song, which was I had signed to uh, Universal Motown. Mm -hmm. What year was that? This was 2005. I thought she was only signed to uh, Atlantic? Atlantic. Nah. I originally got signed, because when I did the song Rumors, he said, she said, right? I heard Shook Smack Game. I ain't see I say yeah, Shook Smack was, Game. That was that, that was, one, yeah. That was right. that one. I was, so I was talking about, yeah, and I was talking about mad shit. And then I got a record deal off that, and I thought it was on. This was like, I had just came home maybe 18, 19 months before that. Mm -hmm. So it was like, it was, it was lit. all the chains. I was wearing the black tank tops. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Black tank top, black tank top ever. Heavy black tank top ever, right? I took them off though. I was like, I took them off. You took those fucking V necks off though. The V necks, I left them. I caught you. Hey, the V necks had a cold run though. The V necks had a cold run. But he still was wearing his last year. I got a picture of my nigga. No, he was not. No, he was not. Yes, he was. Trying to sabotage, sabotage. You gotta stop. I told you, man. I told you. It was last year, I got a picture. I got the picture. Yeah, Somewhere. I thought them died out in like 12 or 13. That, the V-necks. I thought they did. The V-necks? Yeah, I didn't know one day until my you son know, was like, you know yo, what you doing, man? Because I caught him with the V-neck that went down. <laughs> that's 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 no, no, no. That was never in style. That was never in style. Yo, he said he had a leather joint. That is God. That was never in style. We need to That was never in style. Never. That was a foul. That was a technical foul. You know who used to wear that? Like dudes that. Like funny different, like different style dudes that went to clubs. You would see them, they had them. I'm like, whoa, this they dude nipples is out. Wild. That's crazy. Man, that was fuck nipples all that. Coat on Jeez. top, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was the small gold chain. Showing his navel. Nah, this is crazy. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> that's, a, that's a super V. Yeah. So who are some of the uh, OGs in the music space that kind of helped y'all uh, along the process? You mentioned Cam, obviously. Any others? 
Well, Cam was my brother. We grew up together. And that was a thing. We didn't have nobody above us to help us. We we learned our lessons by by, by mistakes, by running into yeah. the wall, trial and error. Um, and God, the grace of God, he, you know, he kept he, he kept us whole, and we figured it out. But for the most part, I would say Dame Dame came in later that. on and, and and helped Cam a lot. And through him helping Cam a lot, it helped all of us with the diplomats when that whole Rockefeller transition mm -hmm. came through and things like that. So that was like the closest thing that we would have to somebody coming in and, and really giving us some mm -hmm. understanding of, of, of what we had. But for the most part, it was just all us. We we were pretty smart and we knew what we wanted and we knew we, how we wanted to be perceived and things like that. And, and that's how we ran. When we got in the building, we did everything ourselves. They'll tell you, we had in Rockefeller, we had our own offices, went downstairs, jumped on tables and marketed the meetings, let them know how diplomats wanted to be seen. Like, I was getting uh, money for, uh, what they call that? Uh, consultant? Yeah, I was getting consultant money from Def Jam, like 10 grand a month, mm -hmm. just because of right. how creative we was and I shit like that inside mind. the space. And uh -huh. you know how the streets was connecting to the music very heavy back then, and we had the streets hand down, so you know. Uh, for me, for me it was Kim. Kim for me. Lil' Kim for me. Okay. So when yeah. I when I when Shout I came out, out yeah. she she embraced me. She opened up her opened up her house, opened up her doors, opened up her, her platform for me to come around, for me to, to to have a peek into the industry. I'm standing next to a to a superstar, right? You know, I, I got to meet people, you know, so I, I I'm I'm a, I'm always be indebted to that because that was a that was a my first peek into the game on a on a superstar level. Right. That's you know the highest level. That was a heavy look. That, that was, was a, when that, that was a heavy yeah, look. It was a that big was look for me. She just came she had just came back home too, right? No, it was she, right it was it was before she went in and after. Yeah. So before she I was there, so I was going to the courtroom, you know, when she had the trial, whatever. But for me, it was big because I had just got back. You know, people was starting to know me from the mixtapes and mm -hmm. from the DVDs. But now I'm standing next to Kim, so it was it was a big moment for me. You know, I started to meet different people, Swiss and everybody. So that's that was my uh, that was that was my that was initiative. Big, Cause you know, yeah. Brooklyn got yeah. that whole mystique. Yeah. So yeah, when, definitely when you. When people start associating you mm -hmm. with the whole Kim shit, I'm right. talking about from, from my right. perspective, right. it's like, oh, yeah. boy going in deep, that the right. whole look of it now, right. heavy on the right. Brooklyn side, right. you know what right. I mean? Right. Like right. the hierarchy of the Brooklyn right. side. Mm -hmm. Right, The top. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. Was Dame in the streets? Did you know Dame when y'all was younger? Yeah, I knew Dame for all my life. My, I knew Dame since I was six years six years old. Word. Yeah, so we grew up in the same buildings. Um, I knew Dame actually before Cam. Cam moved in that building when he was like 13. Cam moved over to 1199. Um, Dame was always different. Um, he went to private school, some fancy private school that he hustled and helped put himself through and shit like that. Um, he, he had lost his mom's at a young age, so I watched Dame navigate through the streets by himself. Um, East Side Kid, where we was at uh, 1199, they considered us to be privileged because those were the newest co-ops in Harlem and things like that. And they, they, they was the high rises and things like that. So mm -hmm. it was just a little different. Um, so they watch him navigate from the east side and go to the west side. West side was like OK Corral back then. That yeah. was like you had to, it was like showtime over there. So if you knew niggas that came back from the west side to the east side and, was, and Dame lived in our building. So he was bringing back all that west side flavor. All of, He had cars since he was 15 and shit like that. So Dame was outside and shit like that. I mean, so for the east side, he was, he was looking like the yeah. end all be all. Like, this nigga yeah. gotta be a drug kingpin. But on the west side, he just was a merely regular nigga hustling mm. out there. You did? Because that was the west side. That's what right. everybody did That's and shit like doing. that. But for us coming, him coming back and forth, it was definitely, definitely dope. So I take nothing away from him. He had us in awe when we was younger and shit like that. Then going all the way up to the days when you would see uh, Jay pull up, when they had the Lexuses and all that shit, mm. and they was get money back then. I can say that they really was doing what I can't say what the, I mean, legend has it. I, I, I was outside and watching what's going on. Legend had it. They was really into what they was into and mm -hmm. watching Cam and my man Duke uh, definitely making them uh, runs across the bridge to the address that they be talking about. And mm -hmm. like, I was yeah. I was in the I wasn't in the midst. I was but I was on the west side at that time of going back and forth and shit like that. And, you know, we, we should, it was, mm. shout out to Dame. He was a very he was a very inf instrumental person in our life coming up mm -hmm. on the east side mm -hmm. before music. Yeah, yeah he, before he, music. he was always damned into what he, mopeds, I, I, give, I give it to him, you dig? Coming through with Hustler, Big Stacks <laughs> and shit like that, like you dig? So let's get to the Lobby Boys album. How did this come up? How did this come together? We, we talked about doing this years ago. World. Years ago. This was something that we've been talking about doing. Um, back when uh, Puff and... and, and, and 
and Ross used to say that they was the, the Bugatti boys, <laughs> right? When they used to call, remember that? When they used mm -hmm. to call themselves the Bugatti boys? Thought they, that, that was gonna be an album or something, but you know, we did a song back then, and, and Capo said, uh, shout out to the Bugatti boys, but me and Mano, we the lobby boys. And when mm. he said that, I instantly understood what he was meaning, like where we come from, mm -hmm. you know? So we talked about actually doing a, a, a tape or an album back then, but you know, sometimes, it, you know, it's all about timing. Timing is everything. It's all about timing. And it wasn't the right timing. And 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 now is the greatest timing. It's no yeah. better time than now. Than now, yeah. It's no better time than now. <laughs> yeah, we captured, I feel we captured the moment. We did. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit about the album. How, who y'all got on the album? Uh, we got Fab on there, Benny the Butcher, Young, Young Ma, M.A. Uh, Blue. Uh, Young Blue. Styles P. Fabio. Uh, yeah. Davies. Yeah, definitely. New York, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, we definitely have you on the New York yeah. side. You got that little, uh, that little uh, workout gym group, don't you? Yeah, Fitlit. Yeah, fit What's it called? Fitlit. Fitlit. Yeah, I've all. been following y'all yeah, doing that's that. All of us. How'd that come about? That shit is dope. I started us talking shit inside of uh, Maine's restaurant, um, Chelsea House. It was, uh, it was like, like New Year, or day after New Year. It was, it was the day, or was it before New Year? One of them. Fab had this. It was right. Yeah, he had. Fab had a, had a, um, this diet plan. He said, yo, we should start this diet plan in the new year. So we said, fuck it, let's do it. And um, we said, we might as well work out. With and it. once we started, we never, we never stopped. Yeah. You know, when it's, 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 it's different, because for me, I always worked out probably on and off my whole life. But I will always do some time and then stop and do a little Not bit more. So I, yeah. But now I'm, I'm way more consistent because now I got people to you work out with. Switching. So yeah. when we go on our group chat and I see that Fab is going in the gym, I'm gonna jump up and say, I'm gonna meet you over there. You know what I mean? And we all, we all end up in the gym together. So it just makes it, makes it fun um, and it makes working out easier. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was a big initiative like we, uh, I just acquired some property that they all going to put some money in so we could finish building out the gym, which give us a piece of real estate for people to actually come visit. Y'all um, building your own gym? Yeah, yeah. yeah we, okay. we already have it and That's stuff like up. that. This, um, so now we uh, going to put all the equipment and make it look all That's right. nice and dope and you know people come by. But it's, it's deeper. We're going to do NFT memberships. Um, we got these boot camp courses that we're going to start. Um, that's not like your regular boot camp. The idea is to make you feel like you actually came to the club, the party, instead of working out, but you're going to be working out. So that's you're going to have some of the dopest up, yeah. DJs inside of the, inside yeah. of the gym. You might ca catch some performances with some of your dopest rappers, you dig? Like, so it was a whole initiative that we have that we're going to bring forth to the table that mixes the actual culture with fitness. Because I don't know if our people know how much money it is inside this oh, fitness man, world. I do on, know y'all know because y'all are athletes, but for the average rapper, or musician, or artist like myself, I don't think they understand that that's a multi-billion dollar industry that is synonymous with music. Mm -hmm. you know? Every one of them but athletes listen also, to music while they're training and all that. So it's a, right. you know what I mean? Like, but it's also health and wellness, and it's something we don't talk each right. right. Working out, you know what I mean? Right. Shit, we don't necessarily talk about enough if you're not an athlete itself. Right. So it's, it's important from that standpoint. Yeah, I'm not too. into the dad body shit these yeah. niggas run around. I can't do about. it. Like, what's, I don't know what the fuck that is, bro. Like, that, like, boy, you look crazy, nigga. You look stupid. Big stomach hanging out, tuck, chains on, too much dead body, bitch. Yeah, like that. I don't I care. Do like, like, it's like, Balance, you know what I'm saying? You seeing dudes having uh, heart attacks at 32, and like, like yeah, that's not. Take that care. Help? Listen, I'm not saying you got to be in the gym every single day, but balance it out. Right. Yeah. Right. Because we we stay we, active. Stay active mm -hmm. because at, what you don't use, you lose. Right. Yeah. So it's you know we we live in a lifestyle where we are up late and you know want to be drinking and not mm -hmm. eating as well. Right. But balance it out because we trying to be here as long yeah. as we can. Come on, man. You only get one turn. Thanks. One turn. Uh, favorite collab to date for each of you? Lobby Boys. Period. 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 The greatest. The biggest, the greatest that, that, that like, for the city. Um, and, and hands down, they're saying it's a classic. It's nothing better right now. Um, Slide's the song of the summer. Yeah. And it, I feel good to, to, to be in a situation yeah, because I shit. feel like what we're doing has yeah, never been done before. Yeah, you never had a situation shit. where artists been in a game and, and, and at this point, this late, because the game says that you you not supposed to get better. That's the game says you ain't going to have a hit when you after you've been in the game 10 years. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is, this is, this is, we writing our own, our own narrative right yeah, now. Yeah. Right? Fuck what they said before. Mm -hmm. Right? You can't do this because you can't, you've been you've been in the game and nobody, nah, fuck all this. Because the only requirement is that the music be dope. 
And we didn't did that. We overdid that. Right. Niggas be fly. You heard me? Fly as fuck. <laughs> the best rapper slash basketball player. <laughs> For me, rapper slash basketball player. Current or just period? Period. Period. That y'all seen in action. That y'all seen mm. on the gram. You did? Because you been you you been to a game I had. Yeah. You dig? Mm-hmm. Scored 30, 35, something like that against two chains and them. They won. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about niggas you seen in action really dogging, like playing it in, in real, real action. Not- well, okay, we, we talking about seen in action, I only seen three. You had the best showing. You definitely had the best showing, but he's not a. I don't consider Chris Brown a rapper. Mm. Nah, he's a ball player. That motherfucker he can hoop. Be, he he could have went to the NBA. Yeah, bro, he's busy. different. I get. I play like, like, a lot of shit. It. Chris, I, Chris I, Brown he, get busy. He can hoop, bro. Yeah, he get busy. Chris Brown can hoop. He remind me of Cam when he was younger. Like he's, he he's busy. a, a Cam, straight guy. No, I heard that about no, Cam. No, no. I heard Cam, Cam was nice. Cam was a beast. Cam was one of the niggas that could have went to the NBA, playing in Rutgers since he was 14. Cam, the All-American, scraping niggas, taking championships in all the tournaments, mm-hmm. and going head to head against Marbury since they've been 15. Mm-hmm. Like real wars against Marbury, like nasty wars. Like you, you can Sham God. Cam all was nice. Ask you can ask, ask Sham God. You heard mm-hmm. Sham would tell you that's they come from the same hood. That's what's up. Cam was bullying Sham, everybody. Like you dig? Like in in that day. <laughs> I love his you shit. You did? Like like, like, and this I shit is there. Clips, like news, clips, everything. His shit yeah. is, you dig? And you ask it's anybody in Harlem. Yeah. You dig? You can, like, you can look is. at him and tell he can hoop, though. Dave can hoop a little bit, can he? Who? Davies. Davies. Yeah, yeah, Dave, yeah, Dave used to be on play yeah. college yeah. ball and Dave all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's how I Jay met Cole Dave. When I first met Dave, is my man Bully Little Brother. So when he used to come to the studio, Dave was in Baltimore playing basketball in college. KD and all the shit they used to be talking about KD before KD even got to. Yeah, Dave have a basketball IQ. He don't just hoop. IQ. He don't just hoop. Mm-hmm. He can think the game too. Mm-hmm. Dave actually. Yeah, no, he definitely right, had. Right. Then he just got, yeah, he got himself in KD trouble. though, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They played in college together. And then the, next, the next year he came back like, yo, I need a record. Like, what you mean you need a record, bro? He like, yo, I, 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 I don't even play ball no more. I'm gonna be hard, I'm trying too. to go to the rap <laughs> and shit like that. And, then, and that's how that's that shit. Dave Hart. Yeah. What's y'all thoughts on hip hop today? I love it. I love it. I love the opportunity. All aspects gets. of it. What, what I'm saying, I love the opportunity that it gets. That the, some of the stuff that that happens, meaning as far as like artists not 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 having the foresight to take advantage of the opportunity, meaning like to me, it's counter it's it's counterproductive, right? This is to get in the game after you've been through all of the shit that you've been through in the street. I've been saying that. And then yeah. and then end up in prison. Want, try to go. Try to end get up to the streets. End up. <laughs> Dead. Get money and like, turn gangster. Right. You know what I'm saying? This is this this is this That's, this happens all too often. It's happening at an alarming rate right yeah. now. But I'm not Facts, like I'm man. not gonna Facts. I'm not gonna lie, we was always into a lot of mischief. You dig? A lot of mischief. The money this gave me an opportunity to get I if I didn't have people to really pull me aside sometimes and, and save me from some of the directions I was going in, like this game is there's a lot of smoke and mirrors and shit like that. And once they get this money, it propels you to feel like you need to be ten times of who you was already was and shit like that. So if you was in a position of who I would turn me into an absolute monster and shit like that, and it shouldn't be. But on the flip side of this, I want people to know that this is a business. So when you mm-hmm. ask, do I love all parts of it? Yes, I do love all parts of it. Cause it's all about how you approach the game. And I mm-hmm. tell people all the time, you get what you negotiate, mm-hmm. not what you deserve. Mm-hmm. So if you approach this game with a, with, with a clear mind thinking and knowing what you want, you're gonna get everything that's gonna come to you. But if you don't understand the business comes before the, the artistry, I mean, Wait, let's get that back. It says 90% business, 10% artistry. You need a 10% artistry to get that 90% business. But once you get into that business mode, the, mm-hmm. art, the artistry becomes minute to what you have on hand with the ancillary money you can make from this game. And that's what it's all about. So I'm I'm completely happy with everything that I've got, the ups and downs and where I'm at today. Because <laughs> through it all, it helped me put food on my table. My mm-hmm. family never had to worry about anything. And I live a hell of a lifestyle. You, you didn't let it play you out the street, though. I mean... That's a tricky situation. I mean, I was I, I come from a certain I come from a certain thing. So when when people even yesterday when I was at the basketball game get certain calls like to ask me why I'm still in the like I don't I think people think I'm out here trying to prove a point of I'm some type of t- I'm not. You dig in my neighborhood, I'm inspiration to right. everybody that comes about. That's like I difference. told somebody the respect that I got the respect that I earn is not right. given where I'm from. Mm-hmm. You dig? And I right. respect each of them the same way they respect me. That's why the love is there. That's why we can go and have basketball games with no violence in my hood. That's right. why we can go and rent out the whole restaurant and let the whole hood eat and things like that. It's not saying right. this is something that we do every day, but where we come from, the people need that inspiration. That's why we mm-hmm. call ourselves the lobby. 
Bobby boys because we come from that. So if people can't see where we come from and see the better side of the shit, then what type of example are we setting? Right. You heard? Like, shit, I love five-star restaurants too, just like everybody else. (laughs) But there's no better gratification than me being able to go in the hood and helping feeding people for a day and things like that. Like, it it, it, means more. Way more. You heard? It feeds way more better than all these restaurants we've been to, and I'm still able to do that. You dig? I don't go to the hood to throw what I got in people's face. That's not... Right, people right. tell you that's that's never been that's me. just he, what we feel comfortable he, he, right exactly you did and i don't think people understand that you heard and i know there's always pinpoint the tragedies that go on but tragedies go on everywhere like right. you can't when god calls you then you can do you could do he's either gonna call you or call upon you just mm-hmm. be ready for mm-hmm. even Wait, choice you, you heard no matter who you are mm-hmm. you know what i mean indeed. Thanks. indeed you guys both had a lot of love and respect for Tupac, and obviously Big was from out this way. You guys got any <laughs> stories with, with either one, inter- interacting with either one of them? My, my, both my no, stories are on 125th Street. I ain't got none of that. I, I, never, I never met Big, and I never, ne- never met Tupac, but I seen both of them on 125th Street. You heard? See Biggie on 125th Street jumping out the Land Cruiser with Lil C's. I never forget that day C's had on the black long construction boots. Now, you got to remember, this is like, this is, you heard? 94, 90s. Like 95, 90s, like 96, like these is that. So this was like the most mind blowing thing for me ever. Now when Tupac was doing Above the Rim, me and my man James walking down two fifth, uh, eighth and seventh on the uh, opposite side of Apollo, we going back to the uh, to the block towards the east side, and nigga hanging out the MPV, my man James Tappy, like, dick on your man right there, because they knew how much I love Pop. I almost fainted. <laughs> 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 that nigga hanging out the MPV, yo, bro. I almost died that day, yeah. bro. Like, because he was in Harlem. That's he used real. to be That's on the real. east side. You seen him in real life, though. I ain't That's never real. seen That's him That's what I'm saying. So, but he used to be in Harlem, either. so we used to be looking for this nigga. Never seen like, Pop. He'd be over there at AK, because he did the, the whole movie was in Harlem, so he ended up finding a hood that he really fucked with, that niggas loved him, and that was over there AK. So we used to run around Harlem all day trying to find Tupac. Wow. Like that way he was filming the movie and shit That's like dope. that. Wow. Was it tough when y'all, uh, obviously, f- fans, was it tough when there was East Coast, West Coast tension for y'all? Or was I mean, it still fan, it was, that was, that was before that was, my era. That was hella excitement okay. to see that. You dig? Like, it was, because it was for the music. So right. we were just waiting for the response. Like, right. oh, Biggie just bomb. Then poop, Tupac just came. Like, this shit did. But then... When niggas got killed, it turned right. this shit way different. And it just was music. It That's got, back when you had the wait at that point for a response. And the response might be two, three months later. It wasn't right. no phone. No it social wasn't media. Like Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Lord is saying yeah. what was going on. You had to next. read shit in the magazine. Yeah. Like you wasn't. You, you couldn't go on online right. and pull some shit up. Come like on, you had to read. And whenever that issue came out, that might have been a two month wait. wait. And that was that was what we was used to. It wasn't yeah. like it was just Tupac and Big. It was right. like this, a lot of these different battles shit went on off. for years. Yeah. Since the Juice Crew and shit right. like that. So the the responses and everything right. was and something that we was already. Yeah. Really, right. You know what I mean? It just, and it was more exciting though, because it wasn't oversaturated. Right. Now it's just like you say something now, somebody got a response. Too much bullshit. Two hours later. Yeah. yeah. And they want to up it. And they send an Addy, and it's, it's lit. You did. <laughs> send an Addy. <laughs> send an Addy. Right? It's lit. Right, so we got send quick it. hitters now. First thing to come to your mind: share uh, five dinner guests, dead or alive. Five what? Dinner guests, dead or alive. Richard to Pryor. Be, to be at a dinner. Tupac. Okay. Um. Who else? Who, who else? I want at, at my dinner. Um. Shit, I don't know. I got a short list. Oh, um, I want uh, what, what's um, Red Fox? Mm. Um, okay, give him some. I'm gonna um, last two. My mother, my father, um, uh, definitely big, definitely pop. Mm. Um, Nip, mm. Kobe. That's a nice table. Sick table. Yeah. That's ten because y'all got two right of y'all. That's ten. That's that we works. Drinking. Eating, smoking, laughing. Good. You're not smoking. You're just catching the contact. You don't yeah, smoke. Yeah. So you smoke. I don't smoke. Or you only smoke. But with him, night. I'm just a, yeah. I'm, I'm a. I, I get victimized. Guilty by association. Yeah. <laughs> Top five NYC MCs of all time. Come on, that's a hard yeah, one, bro. You can't bro. do that to me. It's hard. Like when people ask me that, because I used to bust my brain about who the top five. But bro, these artists are so instrumental to me in my life. It's really like not not the top that's five. That's what it is. To your, your, it's, not, it's your top five. Right, so I, I would say definitely Hove at the top of the list. Right. Right, he's he's at the yeah top of the totem pole. Um, Hove, 
um, Nas. I want I want to throw in Fat Joe because Fat mm. Joe is like Shout a person Joe, that I yeah. really 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 admire, right? Because family, right? Definitely. And the reason why I, I, I really admire Fat Joe because it's something about him that he never dies, and I I, I I'm in, inspired by that. That he's lasted errors. Mm -hmm. He's been around longer than anybody. Mm -hmm. And he is still just Remain as solid. just as potent and, really and just good. as popular, just as relevant as 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 he was in the 90s. Right. That right there. So, so he's true. he's definitely in my top five. Mm -hmm. How many did I say? That's three. That's three. Uh Nas. Oh. Joe. Joe, Nas. Um, sheesh. <laughs> see what I, I Damn. I got, let me see, I go uh, Tupac, of course. No, it's New York. This is New York. It's New York, Tupac, right? of course. It's New he from New York. No, 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 no. He was born in New York. We can't give him New York. We, we claiming him to, to be a New Yorker? He didn't rep New York. He was born here. We understand that. All right. I'm not yep. going to go. All right. We go he was born in New York. Facts. All right. All right. All right. All right. He don't identify with being a New York nigga. Rock, I'm going to go Rock Hill. I'm going to go Rock Hill. Rock Hill. Um, I, I would say Slick Rick, but boy, Slick Rick got locked up and cut his legs off. Like, damn, yeah, it fucked my whole Slick. No like, it was like, my whole Slick Rick thing was like, damn. Like, but Slick, wait, oh, man. Um, Rock Hill, Slick Rick. Cam and Jewels is off top. Uh, Hove, Nas. It was a time where Nas, Nas, Nas was the end all, be all for me from when he did the uh, barbecue shit to his first album and that whole little run right there. I like Nas was fly. Helly Hansen's uh, army has the safari has to fold it up and all. I took a lot of I took a lot of drip from Nas Page, Nas Page coming up in high school. Um, who else in New York? Uh, that used to, uh, Biggie, of course, man. Like, it, it, but once again, Biggie was one of them that we didn't get to see his full potential, and man, I'm right. so, so, so upset with that. Mm. Um, who else from New York? Let, let me let me be clear. Did I say Big Daddy Kane? Mm -mm. You said Rakim. Yeah, but you got to go Big Daddy Kane, even though they, it, it's this. It's, it's, see, it's tricky. For, oh, I'm bugging mm. Karis One. Did I say Kara? Let me begin. Too many. It's too what, many. When, it's why, too many. That's when. the problem See, with let New me York. explain like instruction to a game. <laughs> See, I'm not the same. In fact, I'm kind of <laughs> rational. And I'm going to be asking you, who is more dramatical? This one, that one, the white one, or the black one? Pick yeah. the punk and I yeah. jump up to attack one. Karis one is just to got to lead a crew. Right up to your face and dish you. So if we, got, if, we, if we go back like that, then it's, it's, it's some, Then I got like an unsung hero that I don't hear his name no more, but he was definitely influential in New York hip hop. It was a time, it's definitely influential in Queens, the hip hop. That's Cool G Rap. Mm. Cool G was crazy. I think Cool G Rap. I think Cool G Rap That's why I brought my Maserati. Yeah. We like to eat hearty, party. I think, hip -hop, uh, party. I think Cool G Rap kind of is Ooh. not getting the, 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 the he don't, like, he's written out of the He was really from that, the from real that ones era. Know, though. The real ones know, but it was a time when he was the, he was the bar, mm -hmm. right? As far as, you know, young rappers, he was the bar because he was talking that talk. He was working with Scarface. Like, it was, he was working with, uh, with people, uh, what was it, Quick and, uh, Quick and them in, in, in L.A.? Cool G was the bar. Kid you know what I'm saying? Nas and them was influ influenced he had by, the list, by that. He had the little yeah, list like Cool like, G. Cool G like, was the guy, like. You know, like, niggas I don't think talking about his... real street yeah. shit that niggas yeah. really did. Like, niggas was hearing that shit like, yo, Holy shit. Yeah. Plus a nun, get yeah. out the way, my dick on the curtain. What? Yeah. <laughs> he was talking crazy. <laughs> and I don't think his name comes up enough yeah, you right. in, these, in these topics. Facts. You heard his name man. a lot. That was a good one. Word. What's For the real? funniest thing that happened to y'all recently? Who? The funniest thing that happened to you recently. The funniest thing that happened to us recently? Shit, funny shit happens all the time. Right. Oh, you want to tell them? What's about, wrong? Uh, about, What's wrong? about um, our billboard? Our, our billboard? Oh, uh, shit. So, one so, so we dropped the first song, right? Um, 
It's called Lobby Boys Anthem. So this is this everybody. We we've been teasing this project almost, like almost a year, and everybody's yeah. been like, you know, talking about I right, Mano and Jim Jim and Mano about to drop this thing. So we come and we we drop the Lobby Boys Anthem. We got all black leather on. We looking like you know what I'm saying puffing black raw back in the '90s. Like we got the fire, the pyro going up. We got we go we go hard. So then a person from my camp, shout out to my my, my God, nothing but love for him. He like yo, listen, I got y'all the billboard. <laughs> So I'm like, 42nd Street, bro, from Times Square, we got the billboard. I'm like, yeah, you got the billboard. You got, I want y'all to come down at, at, at 9 o'clock, sharp, and, you know, we, we, the, the, the billboard is going to get revealed. Y'all can take pictures, do videos. I'm like, oh, man, Going it's down. emotional for me. Like, I'm like, damn, my mom's just passed. She would have loved this. I'm like, it's, it's like, damn, it's, this is happening. Man, we get down there. We still there, man. We still there. <laughs> like, hold on. It's like, hold on. I'm like, yo, bro, what happened? What's going on? He, he like, it's, it's going to happen right now. Five more minutes. Five more minutes. It kept being five fucking more minutes, and then I was getting mad, and every time I turn around here on the phone, I can't hear what he's saying. He like... <laughs> we in the middle of Times Square. The middle of Times Square. We the damn told our mothers that, yo, yo we got the billboards up on it, yo, You got bro. people coming over, they taking pictures with us, we just standing out there like this. What the fuck is happening right now? Like, and he over there on the phone like... I'm like, yo, bro, what's going on? He like, nah. Five more minutes, it's about to happen. It's gonna be a uh, <laughs> 9.58. <laughs> so we still waiting five more minutes for our shit to come out. We still waiting right, right now. Right there, right there. <laughs> he never said what happened. It was some, some type of glitch or something. And he put me on the phone with the dude that was running it. They eventually and he said got it was it right. an issue. They got it right, because we I had saw, billboards saw, and yeah. stuff like that, yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you could remember by one bar lyric that you spit, what would it be? Oh, man. For off the lobby, boys. Uh, Just uh, period. Uh, my life is up and down. My life is up. I said, uh, take a look in my eyes, see the places I did crime at. Life is up and down. I was down, had to climb back. And that, that mean a lot to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, you, you measure man by what? Not he how many through. times he been down. How but many times he get up. That's right. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. That's right. Um, my, my, God, God bless my, my aunt Vi this past. She's like one of the most influential people in my life. So I had a, I started a record that has my aunt Vi said it's a bit of Christ in all of us. She also said there's a time that's going to come that Christ's going to call on us. Mm. That's how I started off. And the record's mm. called actually Aunt Vi. I had, did that before she passed like last year off my Harry Fraud, uh, Harry Fraud album. So, you know, mm. that's one of the mm. lyrics that always stick out. And you said your mom just passed? Yeah. Condolences. Condolences. Yeah, I lost no, my so mom. In January. January. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. Condolences. So, uh, Mm. All right, last question. If y'all could have a guest on our show, who would it be? But but before you answer that question, but, you have to help us get your answer on our show. What you fuck mean? Yeah, yeah, I fucked y'all. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know if I'm confused or if I'm high. <laughs> both, both. Both probably. Yeah, probably, yeah. Both is good. So, both who would y'all like to see on our show, first of all? but Tiana yeah, Trump. <laughs> no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But before you answer it, whoever your answer is, you yeah. got to help us hey, get them on here. crazy. So it got to be somebody you know. So it got to be somebody we know? Yeah. Somebody you could put a call into. Come fuck with your boys. That we ain't had, because we damn near had everybody. Mm. Um, oh, I was, I, um, I thought you were talking about like a basketball player or something. Nah, nah, hell nah. Did you, did you have AI? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Alan. You should have Davies up here. I, yeah, I, I talked to him. I talked to him at the fight. That would be dope, though. I talked to him at the fight, so I need his line. If you got his line, that would be dope. Though. Dave would be dope. Yeah. Nah, I was I was serious about the Tiana Trump thing, though. Y'all might as well. <laughs> yeah, nah. You got a line on her. Do you got a line on her? It's the question. Of course. If you got a line, if you got a line on her, this ain't her platform. Like, you can bro. talk about basketball. We got some for y'all. Get box for y'all, boy. Yeah. Special 420 gear. Yeah. To remember this. Wow. And if anybody out there watching, y'all. What's the end of that? All the smoke dot store. Dot store. Man, that's a wrap. Jim Jones, Mayno. Oh, like Lobby Church Boys out now. Out Lobby Boys out now. Get it, it now. Streaming and Stream it. Streaming Stream and beam it. Just don't smoke it. You heard me? <laughs> man, we appreciate y'all, man. Thank you for having us, man. You can catch us on Showtime Basketball YouTube and the iHeart platform, Black Effects. We'll see y'all next week. Jones! <laughs>